What is it like being a Jamaican in Greece? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the world, I talk to Ashley Gale, a Jamaican living in Greece. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Hi, I'm great. It's an amazing day here in Greece. So I'm happy to have this conversation with you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Which part of Jamaica are you from? All right, so my story is, it comes in bits and pieces. I'm originally born in Kingston, but, uh, well, born in UA Hospitals, so everybody's at Kingston, but I grew up in Spanish Town. And when I was 11, I moved to Montego Bay, and I was living there straight up until now. So straight up until a year ago when I moved to Greece, so. <laughs> All right. So are you representing a school there in Montego Bay? You know, we're passionate about high schools. So yes, of course, I'm actually representing two schools, to be honest. So my first school was Mount Alvernio, and then I switched schools at the latter part of high school, and I went to Westwood for two years. So I'm representing both. So very proud of my alma maters. <laughs> Is there a teacher from either of the schools um, mm -hmm. that you remember uh, because that teacher really impacted your life? So honestly, the only teacher that comes to mind, I speak about her very fondly up to this day, is Miss Cameron. She actually got married after I left and she became Mrs. Gale. So yay. <laughs> we recruited her into the family. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Are you I'm serious. She got married to a guy named Gale and I was like, yay. <laughs> So, uh, Miss Cameron, she was my English and literature teacher, and honestly, I think I found a really deep connection in literature um, coming up, and I also did it in Cape, so she was definitely um, a lot to thank for that. She's very charismatic, very hard on us, but she was a great teacher. All right. Yeah. Big up, big up Miss Gale. Mrs. Gale now. Mrs. Gale. Mrs. Gale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, tell us a story of how you got to Greece. All right. So um, I had recently gone back to school during COVID to finish my psychology degree at UAE. And when I was about to graduate, I decided that I wanted to do my master's. And so I chose a program um, at a college here in Greece to do clinical psychology and counseling for my master's. So I'm currently enrolled in my master's program. I'll be entering my last year in October. I'll be proper clinical psychologist next year. And yeah, that's pretty much how I got here. It was between Italy and Greece, and I think Greece won me over, so I'm here. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Now, tell yeah. us a little bit about the people uh, there in Greece. What are they like? Yeah, so the Greek people, I don't know what it is, but I find so many similarities in how they kind of carry out their culture here. Um, my partner always says that it's because we're both close to the ocean and ocean people have a certain vibe. Um, but they're so relaxed. They're so kind here, so welcoming. I mean, I was really freaked out at first because, you know, when you come to a country that doesn't predominantly speak English, you're thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to operate? How am I going to get to know people? And of course, as Jamaicans, we want to talk, we want to connect and everything. And they were so welcoming, so warm. Right now, some of my best friends are Greek and they're just amazing people, love to have fun love to relax, but really hard workers. So we're getting all our own vibe. I really, really enjoy it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Now, yeah. when you tell um, people that you're Jamaican, what is the typical response or questions? Well, um, the Greeks are curious people. <laughs> so to be honest, a lot of the questions that I get. So first they give me the very Greek response where um, they say, where are you from? And I'm like, Jamaica. And they're like, Jamaica. <laughs> they give me this very interesting Greek response that's like very fitting to the Greeks. And then they ask me, why did you choose Greece? Because they're wondering, you know, from one side of the world to the next, like what makes you make that decision? And so we usually end up having that conversation. So a lot like this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I see you wearing your Bob Marley shirt. Do you get the Bob yeah, Marley? You get, you get your Bob yeah, man. Marley questions too. It's purpose, yeah. it's purpose. It's a planting. <laughs> <laughs> so do they ask about yeah. Bob there also? 
What? Always, always. I had a guy ask me if I was Rastafarian. Um, I had someone ask me if I was related to Bob Marley, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not putting it off, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, generally speaking, they ask the typical, you know, like yeah. the typical questions. But a lot of people um, are very interested in Jamaica because they see it as like a dream destination. Okay. Because, of course, you know, Greeks have their islands as well. And so right. they have this yeah. island life mentality as well, even on the mainland. So they're very much connected to that vibe and they love reggae music here. Like, love it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to a couple of reggae parties that has rivaled Jamaican parties. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so since you touched on music, what is the mm -hmm. typical Greek music? Because when we're thinking of that side of the world, I think mm -hmm. you think of uh, ABBA. And, you know. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yes. you know, and we, yeah, a little bit. You know. Um, they do use the traditional uh, sort of Greek instruments. So it's very Eastern European in the way that it sounds. I don't even know if I could like kind of no, uh, recreate that. <laughs> 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 but um, it's almost exactly what you would think it is. It sounds very, very Middle Eastern, you know, very traditional, like kind of uh, uh, throat sounds um, at points and um, oh and very very emotional like everything is sagapo which means I love you in Greek so it's very much like oh don't leave me I love you you know we're meant to be together it's it's amazing honestly <laughs> <laughs> so switching up a little bit food yeah tell yeah. us about the food in Greece, and right. and I'm gonna make this two parts. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. the food, um, mm -hmm. and if you can, if there's one food that you'd say, Xavier, if you visit Greece, you have, have to try. To try <laughs> oh, honestly, it's so difficult because I'm such a foodie. So. When I came to Greece, I was really, really curious about, you know, I've never tried anything Greek before I came here. Like I've born and grew Jamaica and always had Jamaican food, but I always was very interested in, you know, all the food. You know, you have your pasta and your sushi and everything. But um, coming here and trying authentic Greek food, of course, the go-to is you try the gyro. Um, everybody calls it gyro, but it's gyro. So... Um, or gyro, I think they refer to it in the Western world. But, <laughs> gyro. <laughs> but they, have, they have different ones because this is like a, a wrap in a pita. And you can choose different meats. You can choose the sliced meat, which is like on a dono. And then you can also try um, meat that they, that they cook on a stick. And all of these are delicious. Anyone that you like, it's, it's going to be amazing, to be honest. Um, I am a pork fan myself. I know I'm contradicting with the Bob Marley shirt, but like, guys, I love my pork. I can't. <laughs> I can't live without it. I love my pork. <laughs> so pretty much, um, I eat a lot of pork here and a lot of lamb. They have a lot of really good, really fresh meat. That's kind of my favorite thing, just trying a, a lot of different things because the Eastern European culture, you just get many plates and everyone shares. Okay. Um, I'll have to say... Two things when you come here you have to try all right so in the winter they have a stew it's called stifado it's typically made with beef and charlot um charlatans like uh the little mini uh onions i guess charlotte's they call it but the little mini onions they cook this stew into like a tomato paste kind of vibe you have it with really fresh bread and it is the most mind-blowing thing i'm telling you yeah, have to try that. All right. Otherwise from that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise from that, because it's usually in the winter. So that one's kind of difficult. That's seasonal. Okay. But um, all year round, they will have a, a cheese and yogurt dip. They make it with yogurt, feta, and like red peppers. Um, they have two types. They have a green pepper one and a red pepper one. The red pepper one, wicked. Um, it's called terokafteri. Or you can just ask for the spicy cheese sauce. Okay. in english <laughs> and they'll know exactly what it is <laughs> yeah. so those two things amazing 
Yes. All right, <laughs> a little spicy there. Now, boat is the other one. Yes. The star, the stifal, the, the, the first stifal. one. Stifal. Stifal. Is that spicy also, or is it? Um... It's not spicy. It's almost like you're eating uh, stew beef, okay. but more with a tomato vibe because it's tomato paste that they use for the sauce. And they just bring in all these different like herbs and spices in there. They're, honestly, the food is, the, sorry, the food is not spicy here but them wicked upon the seasoning okay. i'm just telling you like i'm a seasoning girl i've never really been big on pepper right also very much to make enough me <laughs> but i do love my pepper every now and again i have my little scotchy in the in the cupboard i'm good <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day food wise the greeks they do it solid i forgive them big big them up for that for sure All right. <laughs> so where do you get your Jamaican fix when you feel for your Jamaican food there? Are oh my you gosh. Are you, never believe, you will never believe where I go to get my Jamaican fix. So first of all, there's no Jamaican restaurants here. Okay. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've looked, but uh, nothing. And I live very close to the center of Athens. So you would think if you're going to find it, it would be here. There is an Ethiopian place close to my house. And I'm telling you, if I could get close enough to how I feel when I'm home and having a meal, that food <laughs> has made me get through some rough times. <laughs> Ethiopian food here is wicked. <laughs> so I think that that's other than literally cooking at home, right. which I do, you know, from time to time. I'm, I'm mostly a baker. I love to bake. I, I make my banana bread and my bread pudding like regular. Oh. But uh, yeah, but um, otherwise, when I really feel for something homey and I want to go out and like have a good meal, the Ethiopian food does the job. Okay. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> are you are you seeing any familiar fruits there? Um, mangoes. Um... Yes, absolutely. They do have mangoes. They're quite expensive here, of course, because they're not necessarily indigenous to this area. But um, because everything is seasonal here because of the, um, the weather, um, you get mangoes mostly when it's a, a bit warmer. Also, you get pineapples here. You can get pineapples here. Um, okay. Uh, we have cherries here that are similar to the Jamaican cherries. Oh. Not exactly the same, but they have two types of cherries here. And one of them is similar to the Jamaican cherry, which very much reminds me of home because I have a cherry tree in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's nice so, yeah, yeah. So, so when we think of greece we think of this you know this historic place and you know yes. you, you mentioned you're close to athens no mm -hmm. you know some may say okay that's a you know it's a tourist trap there must be some place there that you say xavier you know i discovered this <laughs> Not the tourist um, this is well you should check out <laughs> The truth is that as much as Athens is a tourist place for sure, um, I think that they have been able to maintain somewhat of a very, you know, local experience because the touristy parts of the year are, it's all seasonal, you know, most of the times Athenians or, you know, people from all over Greece who live in Athens they want to have a genuine experience as Greek people. And so a lot of the places that you go to, they're very authentically Greek and the Greeks go there. Um, food places generally, Greeks love to eat. They love to sit down and eat and chat and drink. And I love that. <laughs> so um, this is a big, big thing. Everywhere you go, there's a restaurant. Everywhere you go, there's a cafe on every corner. There's a cafe beside me, you know, like, and... In the, in the morning, it's a cafe. In the evening, it's a taverna. You're having your wine and you, you tsipuro and you're drinking and you're having a great time. So it's really, um, that's kind of where the culture of Greece comes in. In terms of actual landmarks, they're all very touristy, of course, because this is the history of Greece. Um, the Acropolis is at the center of Athens. And because I live so close to the center, I can walk out in the street and see the Acropolis up the street, which is amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing, you know, just to be able to see so clearly that there was history here and that it's still such a strong center of the city. Um, generally speaking as well, Athens is quite flat in its landscape, 
So you do have some areas that are hills and you can go up there and see the entire Athens straight out until the city, um, until the sea. So it's really just a gorgeous city, to be honest. I would recommend if you come here, you go into the city center to see even the touristy things because, you know, they have their craft markets around and everything. And I would say spend a little time in the city and then do yourself a favor and go to one of the islands because the islands is where it's at. Ah, I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, that's you can't get more authentic than that. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: the people in Athens, um, which island, like the locals, typically go to? Which one of the islands? So I can tell you which ones they don't go to. <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if this is um, general knowledge, but when I came here, I had no clue that Greece has over 6,000 islands. Oh. Yes. And over 1,200 of them are actually habitable. Mm. So this is a lot of options for the Greeks and the world at large. Like so many people come and visit the islands and so many of them don't even know that the islands really exist outside of Mykonos and Santorini. Those are the ones that the Greeks don't go to <laughs> because they're overpriced. <laughs> They're terribly overpriced and they're just kind of hyped up. And to tell you the truth, the Greeks always say there are better islands out there. We have so many okay. islands and they're so much more authentic and they're so much cheaper. Okay. So definitely these two, you can take off your list. I don't know if I'm helping out anybody. Sorry, guys. No, I, I, we, 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 you know, we wanted to hear the local, the local view. I yes, know, absolutely. You know, these, those are the ones that we'll probably go to. And when I, when I probably visit, that's probably where, where we'll end up. Anyway, but yeah, to know. I will tell you too, though, that I know for sure um, Milos and Egna are two popular destinations for Greeks because they're quite close. Milos is a little bit further by ferry. It's like five hours and Egna is about an hour's uh, ferry ride. And I've been there twice and my partner has been to Milos and it's uh, just really amazing. He can't, you know, say enough good things about it. I've had an aunt as well that went to Milos recently and she's like, it's amazing. It was so authentic. There was, you know, uh, or Airbnb was on a hillside and we had to like trek up there with our bags. But it was just such a great experience because when they looked out at the view, it was just blue and white, which is, you know, the Greek colors, of course. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's perfect. Honestly, the islands are really where it's at. <laughs> so for you, when you, you know, say, I want to take it down a little bit, take a break, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you do there? You know, what's the thing for you there? So there are, even on the mainland, there are access, um, access points where you can go to really nice beaches because it's such a big, you know, place. You're kind of, you're able to travel around on public transportation, which is my situation right now, but public transportation, very well done. They have a metro, they have a bus, they have a tram, and then they have taxis if you don't want to take any of those things. But um, I have some friends with cars and every now and again on the weekend, we would all just drive out to the beach and we have a beach day. And that's kind of how the Greeks like to spend their time. Oh. So they're really in the summer, beach is everything. And then in the winter, bars are everything. <laughs> <laughs> B, B, yeah. B and B. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You can see how there's the similarities between Jamaica. Although Jamaica, it's all year round bar and beach. <laughs> <laughs> so cost of living, what's the cost of living like? So um, if we're comparing to other European countries, Greece does very well in terms of cost of living. Um, of course, there are some things that you kind of say, okay, why is this so expensive? Um, but generally speaking, um, I'm able to maintain my budget most of the time. And if I can give you an example, going out to eat at like, you know, like a, when I say a nice place, I mean like a place that has good food. A lot of places have good food here and they're relatively cheap. The only time you're going to get like a proper price gouge is when you go to somewhere that's like a five star, you know, Michelin, like they, they they're doing something fancy. If you're going to a Greek place that has Greek food, it's more than likely going to cost you for two people to eat. It's not going to cost you more than 30 euro. And that's if you get appetizers, entree, dessert, 
like drinks, everything. So okay, okay. yeah, all right. Consent. Now for a Jamaican getting a visa to come there, is it a difficult process? So let me tell you my story and then you can tell me if it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um because I was a Jamaican wanting to go to Greece for a long stay visa, you can't apply in Jamaica. You have to go to Mexico City in order to go to the Greek embassy in Mexico City because they have jurisdiction over Jamaica for long stay visas. Right? Okay. Now, in order to get through to them, it took me two months because they don't answer their phone calls and they don't answer emails. Ooh. I had to literally go through the Hellenic, um, like the um tourist board or mm -hmm. you know i had to the, the ministry of tourism i had to go on their page and check every office that had something to do outside of greece i was like okay i'm ccing you i'm ccing you and i emailed all these people to tell them my full story <laughs> and that is the only way i got a response and then i was told that there was no way to get it other than to come to mexico so i ended up having to then spend that money to go to Mexico, even though Mexico was amazing, guys. Honestly, I really enjoyed myself. <laughs> um, but we went to Mexico City, my partner and I, and we spent two weeks there, even though the process itself, I was so vexed. I was ready to cuss them off and to, you know, come here and say, no, man, I'm gonna let me really go through this. But then the guy was so nice and I was like, crap. <laughs> so honestly, I couldn't even be vexed because he was so nice. He was smiling all the time, asking me questions, complimenting my hair. I was like, oh, stop. <laughs> so I couldn't even be vexed with the guy. And then I got my visa like two days later, which was, it was, went in on Friday, got it on Monday. So it was really such a quick um, and good experience once I got there. But honestly, the setup was, we need to do better. Honestly, guys, it shouldn't be this hard. We want to go to Greece. <laughs> so, so it sounds yeah. like, but folks who are going to visit, visit a visa is okay. Yeah. Okay. Visit a visa, perfect. You can do that in Kingston. Right. You can do that at the Spanish embassy. But right. long stay visa, it's a little bit rough. All right. Be prepared, so, folks. If you're doing a long stay, be prepared. <laughs> Just let me know if you need help. <laughs> All right. That 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 is great. That's that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, you know, I, I appreciate you, Ashley, for, for jumping on, telling us a little bit about <laughs> your experience there in Greece. No, um, I'm gonna give you a scenario. You mm. leave Greece, okay, you are headed back to Jamaica. Sounds like Montego Bay is your your um my stomping ground. Your stomping ground. Your stomp, stomping ground. So you you come through the airport there. What is that first mm. thing that you're doing once once you get out the airport? For All some right. People, so other than other than literally having to rush to my family and hug up and kiss up everybody because I miss them so terribly. Um. I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pour me some white rum because <laughs> I need it. <laughs> um, the Greeks, they don't do rum, so it's been a little rough. <laughs> um, pour me some white rum and uh, I probably would go straight down to Pier 1, have something off the menu, something off the local menu and sit down and have a great chat with some friends. So I think that would be the first thing I would do, to be honest. So this is a first, the white rum one is a first for me. <laughs> um, um, but folks, you know, if you're going to Greece and you're gonna look up Ashley, you know you better bring the bakla right rum for your Guys, that's, that's, the, that's the admission. <laughs> one bakla <of> white rum. <laughs> <laughs> so, in closing, any any advice uh, to folks who are are you know thinking of coming to that end, uh, the, you know that side of the country, um, not country, sorry, that side uh, of the world. The world. <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, um, as someone who lived in Jamaica my entire life and then now only venturing out into the world, really, and just making this very drastic change. I mean, it wasn't easy. You know, mentally, I was prepared because I knew I wanted to do this. But at the end of the day, it really was a big change. And of course, you go through the moments where you're like, boy, I'm kind of miss yard and everything. But 
at the end of the day, I think it was such a great experience. You have to do it. I, I, I almost feel like you have to do it. Um, it was something that I didn't think I was ever capable of doing because I've only lived in one place my entire life. I mean, of course, I've moved around Kingston and moved to Mobe and everything. And I'm very familiar with Jamaica on a whole. But to come out of your element and to share your culture with people and for them to embrace you, it's such a beautiful thing. Every single friend I have from my class is from a different country. Wow. And it's so amazing to think that I have a friend from Lebanon. I have a friend from North Sudan. I have a friend from Greece. I have a friend from T Turkey. Like... I have so many different inputs in my life. And I guess, especially as a psychology student, this is so important to understand perspective and culture. And I think it was probably the best move I've ever made. Wow. So do it, guys. And Greek is not, well, it's not easy to learn, but it's great, honestly. It's a really cool language and you'll love it. Wow. <laughs> so so how fluent are you now? Or from a, from a let's grade it, from a, from A being top, and D being the lowest? Uh, I think I'm still like a D, to be honest. I mean, I can come in and say like, good morning and good afternoon and hello. I can say, what's up? Um, if someone asks me what's up, I can reply. Um, and I know like little words, uh, the Greeks say orea a lot. It means beautiful. And you can use it to describe a day or just like your mood. Like, how are you? Or yeah, like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm beautiful. <laughs> so um, there's very little things, of course, that you grasp as you go along. Um, I think just kind of the basics even help because they're very welcoming when you want to learn the language they're so supportive they'll they'll correct you a little bit and they say wow good accent and you know and everyone knows um english in athens so really if you if you know that you're fine okay. but they're really definitely they, they they cheer you on when you're trying to learn the language so it's great <laughs> all right well here's how i typically end i need you to teach me how to say Goodbye in Greek in the yes. most informal way. In the most informal way. Yes. Okay, that's super easy. You say Yasu. Yasu. Because Yasu. So this means hello and goodbye because it means health to you. Oh. So you can use it for both. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, Ashley, thank you, thank you again. And as they say in Greece, Yasu. <laughs> Perfect. And I'll give you another one just for an extra. If you want to say thank you in Greek, you say, Efkaristo. Okay, that's a whole heap of words. That's a <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll say it. Efkaristo poli. It was amazing. Thank you so, so much for having me. And I hope I added something so that you guys can learn a little bit more about Greece and come visit. <laughs> Yasu. <laughs> Yasu. <laughs> Show us some love now, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell that way you don't miss a video.